Right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Y'all gonna have to rock with me this morning. I'm gonna move around a little bit because I'm a little cold. I'm, I'm tropical people, so I'm trying to warm up. I don't know if, if it's like y'all. Uh, back in 2005, I was shopping for my uh, salon and barbershop, about to buy, uh, buy a bunch, a whole bunch of supplies for my uh, for my store because I, I mean for my shop because I noticed my stylist would always be going out having to buy stuff to come back. Um, for their clients. And when I was out shopping, I went to a Korean-owned store. Now, let me tell you, I'm oblivious to all this because I'm not a cosmetologist, barber, stylist, or anything, right? I'm just a person that owns multiple businesses. So I go in there, you know, happy-go-lucky, like I'm buying stuff, and next thing I know, I see the guy pull a golf club and threaten me with it because he saw me doing some extensive shopping, right? So he'd pretty much tell me, hurry up and buy. Now, you guys don't know me very well, but he caught me on a good day. So I quietly left, right? So I left, but then I said, I didn't buy anything from him. I was prepared to spend about $2,000 that day. And I left and I said, you know what? I'm gonna open my own beauty supply store. Foolishly, because I didn't know what was really going on in the industry. My ignorance uh, led me to just do it because I think it's all good. We got money, there's no problem, there's no strategy, there's no lockout. I had a very difficult time getting in. But once I got in, I perfected uh, the business, I learned it very quickly, and in a year and a half, I had two other stores open. And about a month ago, we opened our 87th beauty supply store in Texas. Now, I want you to really understand this. There are 13,000 stores across this country. 96% of our money is what feeds into this industry. Less, less than 3% of them are black owned. This is a $15 billion industry. So I've waged this an economic hate crime against black people. Now, that's this, but if we think about many of the other businesses, it's exactly the same way. You see, the thing about business is we gotta focus on ownership. We gotta focus on owning stuff, and that's really not what we're doing. We have to control jobs. Those that control jobs are the loyalty of the people. The way we, uh, the kind of jobs we have professionally dictates how we behave personally. What does that mean? Women, I know some of y'all wanna go home and bust your husband or your boyfriend across the head, but you gotta go to work tomorrow. You can't get a felony conviction. You can't get in trouble, so you basically operate accordingly based upon the job that you have. And then subconsciously, we look at who's providing us with those jobs. So then our loyalty, in many cases, we don't even realize this, our loyalty goes towards the people that are the job providers. See, we're not controlling jobs. Now, we like to brag about the $1.1 trillion spending power that we have. But if we have no payroll power, we have no power. Because if we really think about this, those that are paying us the money, we go out and say we're going to boycott these businesses because we have money. Well, all they can do is boycott the payroll. You know what? They want to boycott patronizing our business, we're gonna boycott hiring those people. And then what happens? See, we're living comfortably in this country because of the mercy of white people. Now, we like to think about saying, oh, we're treated harshly, but we're living comfortably because of the mercy of white people. What does that mean? What if they wake up tomorrow and all of them says, let's get rid of all the black people on our payroll? What's gonna happen to us? How would it look in 2016? It would look like Emancipation Proclamation all over again. That's how it would look. Now we wanna run around and protest in the streets talking about black lives matter. But black lives can't matter until black pockets are fat. That's how we get people to respect us as a group. We're not controlling the jobs. That's the problem. But I know many of you are uncomfortable saying black and black owned. So we go out there and we say minority own, minority this. Black folk, we can say black folk. We can say black hair. We can even say black church. But we can't say black business because all of a sudden that becomes racist. Think about that for a second. So racism is really an economic engine. It's really an engine to suppress a group of people, but they're doing it economically. Now, they spent 400 years saying whites only, and it worked out for them. So I know some of y'all don't want, don't want to you know, endorse certain things because you got to go to work tomorrow. 
and I may be stepping on some toes when I'm talking. But the problem is we won't have to worry about those toes if we control payroll. That's the whole thing. At the end of the day, we're being orderly and marching to a certain beat of the drum simply because of the payroll. We're thinking about how are we gonna to survive tomorrow. You know, statistics show that the average business that goes on to be successful is started by an individual between the ages of 28 and 42. Meanwhile, the average age that a black person takes serious steps towards entrepreneurship is 56. So we're not 400 years behind, we're 414 years behind. Because we're doing everything on delay. We're not going out there saying, let's make entrepreneurship the first thing that we do. What we do is make up the backup to the backup to the backup to the backup plan. Mm -hmm. We go into entrepreneurship when we have a felony conviction, we can't get into corporate America, or we don't have a high school diploma, so we're stuck with low wages or entry level uh, jobs, positions. That's when we start thinking about entrepreneurship. But you know who's part of the problem with the black group? The black sophisticates. The black sophisticates, the ones that go to college, get the degrees, leave, have all those skills, and then take those skills to non-black businesses. So then what we have is a group of people that are starting businesses that are not always as equipped to run a good business. Now I know there are a few of you, I know some of y'all say, you're not talking to me because I run a good business. There may be a few of us that's running good businesses, but for the most part, the rejects are who are starting businesses in our community. So then what happens is, we go around and we help perpetuate the stigma that black businesses are inferior. We go around saying, I'm not going in that black business because they're not gonna give me good service. Their prices are gonna be too high. They're not gonna be reliable. They're not gonna have what I want. You know why that's happening? Because the black sophisticates are taking their skills to non-black businesses, or they're not starting businesses. That's the problem. So now we're thumbing our noses to the people that we are contributing to the problem. The minute we get a degree, we're looking for the, the highest bidder. We're going out looking for the person who can give me the most money so I can move out to the circle and have my two-car garage and my cat. That's what we were looking for. We're not saying, well, I'm gonna take my skills back to the community, either start a business or help a black business grow. We're not doing that. So we can come to these events and we can be all dolled up, but if, until we wanna have a harsh conversation and look in the mirror and tell the truth, we're gonna to continue to be in problems. We're worse off now than 100 years ago. During the Black Wall Street, during these different times, we're worse off now. We're more educated, but yet more ignorant. Mm. See, the whole thing is, there are three problems, three main problems that every black business has. One, access to adequate capital. Two, the ability to get high-skilled workers. And three, getting high paying customers. Those are the three main problems that we have. So how do we really solve those problems? The numbers show that the most successful black owned bank generates $84 million a year in this country. Meanwhile, the most successful Asian owned bank generates $30 billion. So what are we doing with our monies? So we run around saying we're going to a black church, but who's the black church contracting with to landscape the property, to clean the building? See, they're gonna ask you to congregate to volunteer your time to the Lord. But then when they got the monies up and it's time to hire somebody, are they hiring a black business? And when you show up with your tithes, on Monday morning, what are they doing with that money? Taking it to a non-black owned bank. But then telling you to have faith. 
See, I don't mean to knock the churches. To this. It's, not, it's not what I'm here for. Hope no pastors in the, in the room. <laughs> Does everyone pat it down when they came in? Because I'm not trying to really cause much trouble. But I'm just trying to show you it's part of our behavior. We can't keep pointing our fingers because it's, we're, we're actually contributing to the problem. We're 14% of this population. Asians are 5% of this population. They run circles around us. While we're busy working, worrying about immigrants coming, taking our jobs, we're not focusing on the ones coming, creating jobs. And then when we go to our politicians, even on the debate, uh, you hear Donald Trump and the different people, even the Democrats, when they talk about the black community, they talk about giving us jobs. And we're okay with that. You see, we're okay with having museums named after us. We're okay with having Martin Luther King Drive. And we're okay with having a black president or Black History Month. But we're not thinking about who has the contracts to maintain those bridges. Who's getting the contracts to set up businesses in the airports? See, we're worried about O'Hare in Chicago becoming Obama. But we're not worrying about getting the businesses that we own in Obama to make sure that we're circulating that money. Ownership is not something that you perfect overnight. Statistics show that in order for someone to become a high skilled professional in anything, they gotta contribute 10,000 hours to their craft. 10,000 hours. Let me tell you something. Many of us are first generation entrepreneurs and we're stuck being first generation entrepreneurs. When we're not first generation entrepreneurs, we become second and third generation hustlers, not enterprisers. We're not taking the time to really understand the craft and the artistry in being entrepreneurs, full-time entrepreneurs, not side hustlers, not kitchen technicians, real entrepreneurs that are creating jobs, controlling them, and contributing to the circulation of the money. We're not spending enough time doing it. And then we wanna set up our businesses and compete with people that have been practicing for 200 years. See, they got, Asians got kids right now, and I'm just, all the other groups, they got kids that are watching and witnessing their parents be good entrepreneurs. And then you get upset in your job because they write you up for being late. And then all of a sudden, you're empowered to start your own business. So you will start your own business to compete against people. Oh, you may be 45 and this guy may be 25, but he's been practicing for 20 years from the other group. They got many years ahead of you. But then we come out, we run in a slapstick business, and then we go out of business, the first thing we say is, black people don't support each other. This problem is not just as simple as going out, starting a business, and all of a sudden we're gonna be successful because we say we're black. Our people don't deserve black owned, they deserve best owned. So if you're not focusing on your craft properly, why should I force someone to do business with you? This problem is on many, many fronts. This is the thing that we gotta focus on. So I'm gonna talk to a couple people here in a second. Entrepreneurs, running good businesses, like I said. We have to learn to run good businesses, spending our time building our craft with our customers and the whole nine. And I know, see, this is when we resort to well, you know how it is. The minute we start slipping in our business, we're locking our doors, we're not back in time, we're making people wait, we don't have the right products and services, then all of a sudden, everyone's your bro, your bro and your sis, and this is just how we are. But that's not true. Because at the end of the day, the people that you think are gonna support you will not. All your skin folk and your kin folk. Some people may be black, but they're really not black. They just got a good paint job. <laughs> and deep down inside, it's a whole different story. So until you're coming out and you have the expectations of running a great business, you're not entitled to the support 
of your family, friends, and any other black person that you think must support you. We gotta take this thing a little more seriously. Employees. Now you've got employees, if they go work for a huge corporation, their behavior is totally different than when they come to work for you. And it's not that they can't do the job, it's just all of a sudden, you're not that important. See, we, we like to devalue each other. We like to look at each other as less than. And that comes from what we've been taught and the imagery that's given to us. So you gotta be smart enough to reject that kind of stuff. You can't believe when they say, Black people cause all the trouble. Black people the one on welfare. Black, then we start to ingest it and we behave accordingly. We grab our purses and lock our doors when we see black people. We have to make sure that we keep a high value amongst each other. And if we go work for one, we act as if we're working for Delta Airlines. This is a job I can't lose and I'm willing to see this, this business flourish. But that's a whole other story because sometimes we got haters right in our circle, right? I know some of y'all know them. Some of y'all won't even hire your own family. Next, parents. We gotta create a culture of entrepreneurship. We don't have a culture of entrepreneurship in our household. You know what we, we say about our kids when they're growing up? Oh, let them be kids. You know what the other group say? Oh, let them be employees. We're busy saying that we're giving them a great childhood, but then we contribute to them having a horrible adulthood. See, a bad parent is just like a bad driver. A bad driver can mess up traffic for miles, and a bad parent can mess up lives for generations. Just by simply not making sure that we foster the right culture in our household. Entrepreneurship is only difficult on the first generation. Once that generation has taken it and got it set, the second, third, fourth, fifth generations, they really good, they can operate like employees, but they just got ownership. They can clock in at nine, clock out at five, and have a safe and secure place to work, but they have ownership. So your first generation, we got to clock in at 4 a.m. and we clock out at 10 p.m. But then we get tired. We get frustrated and then we go hit the easy button. We go work for governmental corporations. When are we going to be the real revolutionaries? That's what we have to do. Ownership is the only way. Leveraging and getting out economics is the only way. Politicians. We gotta make sure that our politicians are giving us the things and the tools that we need. We can't let them pander to us and give us the crumbs. I'm gonna give you jobs. No, don't give me jobs, give me contracts. Show me where the RFPs are at. We gotta stop thinking a $100,000 job is a great day and a great lifestyle. No, 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 that's no money. We want 100,000 a month. That's when I'm, I may be okay with saying, okay, I, I've gotten some. 100,000 a month. Some of y'all looking at me saying I'm crazy. But I'm not. That's, that's just over a million dollars a year. Each one of you have a million dollars worth of talent in you per year. The same energy it takes you to go work for someone else, the same energy it takes you to build your own business. Pastors again, we gotta make sure we're holding them accountable. Who got the contracts? Who's getting those deposits on Monday morning? Every week, $400 million go into the black church by way of tithes and offerings. $400 million a week. The beauty supply business, $750 million per week. That's over a billion dollars already per week that's leaving our hands. We, we have we have the power to stimulate our own economy immediately. If we focus on where we're spending and where we're trying to make sure that we build our wealth. What I'm gonna tell you in closing, I want you guys to really understand something. 
your vision does not need an endorsement. You gotta stop running around looking for people to tell you it's a good idea. If God put it in you, it's a good idea. We got too many people out here looking and plotting on your downfall instead of looking and working on their breakthrough. And you stay there and you let them affect your own vision. You have to make sure that you're not looking for the endorsement of other people. You don't know the motives of people that you may be laying with every night. I know, preach. You don't really know. Some of them discourage you because they feel they don't want you to get too successful because you may leave them. It may be an insecure issue. Some of them may feel that they're protecting you because they think you're gonna fail. They don't think you have what it takes to be successful in business. But I'm telling you, if you have that purpose and you have that vision, you gotta ride that thing out. They're more comfortable watching you get up and go work for someone else. Instead of saying, you know what, those same skills, the same time, the same traffic that you uh, spend time in can contribute to your own wealth and the legacy that you could be building for your family. And in closing, I just want to say, people, when you own your own business, you have no time to be in someone else's. Thank you.